Hi, this is Adam from Inflectra, and today we're going to be showing how to use Rapise, our test automation tool, with SpiraTest, our test management system. So for this demo, you need to have already installed Rapise on your machine and have a SpiraTest account. Once you have those two things, what you need to do is go into your SpiraTest instance, which we're using on Chrome today, and make sure you've got a new project. So we've got a project here called Rapise Demo Project. And for today's demo, I've actually created uh, two folders, regression tests and smoke tests. And then what I'll need to do is go into Rapise. And if the, this is the first time I've used it with Spira Test, I'll need to go into the Spira Connection settings on the Options ribbon. Put in the URL of your Spira Test or Spira Team instance, um, a login and password. You'll also need to put in a location uh, where it will check out the test cases to and from SpiraTest, uh, basically your working directory. And I've created one called C Spira Repository. And that does need to exist already. So on your hard drive, just make sure it exists. If not, create a new folder. Now the other thing you need to do, we'll come back to a little bit later on, is the token name. That is used to identify the machine, but we'll come back to that. Once you've got those information filled out, hit the test button. That will make sure your connection is correct. And then hit save. And so then what you'll need to do is go into the file menu of Rapis and choose new test. It's going to connect to the different projects in SpiraTest and I'm going to change it from the sample one library information to my special Rapis demo project that I created for today. I'm going to put my test in the regression test folder so I'll click on that option there and I choose new test case. That will create a new test case inside this folder. So I'll call it regression web test one. It creates it and it selects it. If there are any test steps, if this was an existing manual test case, they would be displayed here. This is a brand new one, so you won't see that. Next, you need to choose what you're going to test. Well, for today's demo, I'm going to be testing our trusty library information system web application. But you can test a desktop app, an API, a mobile app. It's, it, it's all the same as far as Spyro test is concerned. So I'm going to choose web cross browser and Firefox is the browser I'm using to do my recording and I'm going to use Chrome to actually uh, use Spyro Team so I can keep them separate. But you can choose any browser, so I'll choose Firefox. And for today's demo I will use the RVL scriptless language, but you could use JavaScript, it doesn't change anything. So there's my test case, there's my empty test script, nothing in it right now, and I'm going to start recording. So I'll choose record, and I'm going to choose the option here to log in. Librarian, librarian, login, go to the book management section right here, create a book, new book one, hit insert, uh, verify that was created, I'll do that using the verify option, control and one, and I'll verify the text, and then I'm going to hit log out, clean up my test, I hit finish, that's the recording done. Hit insert here, and there's my test case. Very easy. Hit save, and that saves it locally. Now, before I can do anything else, I will want to save this to Spira. So that will upload all of the test artifacts, the test case script, the object's definition, uh, any user functions, anything else in my folder that I want to will be saved and versioned in Spira test. So I'll choose save to Spira. It's going to create what's called a repository. That's basically a document folder in SpiraTest. It's going to upload all these files. And by default, it knows to ignore certain other files like TAP, TRP, basically report files and log files. So that it knows to ignore, plus my user settings. So you normally don't need to change this. If there are other files in the folder that you don't want to be uploaded, you could add them to the ignore list as well. OK, it's uploaded. Very nice. Uh, so if you had an Excel sheet, for example, of, of data that could be used for, for data-driven testing, that's another example of a file you might want to upload to SpiraTest and version control. So if I go back to SpiraTest in Chrome and I go into a regression test, there is my test. If I click on it, you'll see it hasn't been run yet, which is, which is correct. And if I go in here and go to the overview tab, you'll see the information, the meta information. There's no steps because we're not using it for manual testing, but you'll see in the automation section, you will see the uh, file name and then the other paths to the other related files. If you want to do data-driven testing with parameters, you could also define your parameters and these will get passed to the repeat test script. And otherwise, what we'll just want to do is click on this 
and that will take us into the document section and you can see right here this is the test file and if you want to see other files you can go into it as well right here and you can actually preview for example if I want to look at the uh, what's it called the objects file that's a JavaScript file I can see that preview it there's all my objects if I click on the user control which is the user JS file I'll see the same thing which right now I think there aren't, there's anything in there so it's yeah it's empty so that's exactly what I would see because I'm using RVL I won't see the Excel sheet in here if I was using JavaScript to record my tests I would see those in here so everything is basically version controlled in Spyro Test. And if you want to see that in more detail, you click on the documents view and you can see these are all my files right here and they will be versioned. So when I save an update to the test, it's going to update a new version right here. So that's how you would create the test in Rapease, save it back to Spyro Test and have the documents versioned. Now, a typical use case is you want to run the test automatically on different machines and get the results. So to do that part, we need to do one more thing, which is to go into testing, automation hosts, and we're going to create a new host. Host is the name of the computer. It doesn't have to be the physical Windows name. It's just a logical name. And my computer, because I'm a Doctor Who fan, is called TARDIS, and I'll just call it TARDIS. The token is important. That needs to match the name that you're going to give it inside of uh, Rapees on the machine. So I'll just do uppercase to avoid having to worry about matching that. So hit save. That's my automation host. And the one thing I do then is I need the launching tool. So if I shut Rapees down, and I go to my start menu, I'll do Rapees Launcher which is right here. And the launcher is the thing that's responsible for scheduling the tests. It connects to Spyro Test, login and password, and it uses the same information that you've already entered in Rapease. So it should already be filled out with the right information. If you're not sure, you can always test the connection just to make sure. And the other thing you can do, and you will need to do, is set the automation host token. Now this is important. This token here needs to match that token there. If it doesn't, then when you go to check the test and schedule a test, it's actually not going to run. So I'm going to tell the check every two minutes. Look ahead. That's how far ahead I want to look ahead for tests. And I want to run ones that are overdue. That way, when I set a test in the past, it will do catch up. Hit save, hit close. That's good. So what I need to do now in Spyro Test is one more thing. Go into my test set view. And I've created two folders, so I'll just put it in the test cycle one folder. I'm going to create an automated test set that contains my test case that I want to run on repeats. Now, in real life, you would probably want to have more than one test case in the set. It could be your entire regression suite, for example. So we'll just pretend that's what it is and say it's regression suite. Now, for today's demo, to keep it simple, I'm just going to schedule this one test case to run once. But there are some more advanced scheduling options, which can be quite interesting. So, but first of all, we'll just add the test case. So you go to add, choose the folder, regression tests, add the set, test case to the set. There you go, that's in there. Again, you could have more than one in here if you wanted, but that's all we have to do. In terms of scheduling it, um, I might want to choose a release. We don't have any, so I'm, I'm going to leave that blank for now. But there's a couple of different scheduling options. So the simplest thing to do would be to um, type in the time right here and go, I want to run it today, the 15th. And I want to run it in the past, so it guarantees that it runs. So I'll say 11.30. Like that. And run it one time. If I want to run it on a schedule, I can choose it right here. So I can run it daily at 11.30, daily at 9.30, weekly, monthly, or hourly. So you've got those built-in recurrence options. And then the last option, which is quite handy, if you've got a continuous integration server running, you can choose this option here, and that will mean whenever a build is run and it matches the release that this test set is scheduled for, it will auto-schedule it. And if the build fails, maybe the code is wrong, then it won't schedule it. So that way you only get the test running when a build has passed and the build is completed. So that's a handy option. Um, but to do that, you would need to set the release. Uh, and the other thing you'll need to do is set the automation host. So I'll say TARDIS. That does automatically flip it to automated so that it knows. And I hit save. And that's going to save the test set. And it marks as not started right here, which is good. If I refresh, that's fine. Now, in the launching tool, so you can see what's going on, 
it's going to poll in about one minute and 30 seconds. And in real life, on a real machine, you just have this running in the background in the system tray, polling all the time. But for today's demo, so you haven't got to wait for one hour, one minute and 30 seconds, I can hit force poll. And that just says, you know, launch it right now. So I'll do that. So now it's running my test case on my machine. And it happens to be on the same machine, uh, but in real life, it could often be on a different set of machines or an AWS server, uh, things like that. So it's designed to run on different machines. Uh, and that's why you have the automation host token. So you can say, run it on this machine or that machine. You can even have multiple machines share the same automation host token. Then it becomes a, basically a pool of machines. So whichever of the machines is available, will do it first. OK, so while I was talking, it ran the test and it probably passed. We can then go into Spyro test just to make sure what actually happened. I'll hit refresh. It says completed. And it says 100% passed, which is excellent. If I scroll down, hit refresh here, it's passed. If I go to my test run tab, I can also see in more detail exactly what happened. And you'll get a step-by-step -step option here. And if I have any requirements linked to it, then it will also um, update the status of the link requirements. And that's pretty much how you would uh, test an automated test using rupees. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope it was helpful in understanding how to use rupees to do automated testing with SpiraTest. If you'd like to learn more about automated testing, ALM, or software testing in general, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much.